Ada Almuteri joins us tonight as director of the UC San Diego Center of Excellence in Nanomedicine. Her research group, the Laboratory for Bioresponsive Materials, creates novel smart materials for on-demand drug delivery, regeneration of damaged tissue, and safe image-based diagnosis. She'll explain to us this evening how she and her colleagues build materials from atoms and molecules that fall apart on demand and the impact of this technology. Please join me in welcoming Ada Almuteri. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a chemist operating at the nano and micro scale. What that means is that we build small, exquisite objects. Uh, objects that are programmed, they're exceptional because they're programmed to dismantle on demand. And uh, these demands that we place on them are to dismantle by remote control and also to be discerning enough to recognize the beginnings, the earliest stages of disease. What I mean by that is the molecular beginnings of a disease, the molecular signs, at a, at a stage where the physician or the, uh, or the, the patient themselves are not able to feel or see this disease yet. So um, what I want to impress on you today is that those that view the world through a molecular lens are well positioned to tackle some of the problems, the major problems that, fa that we face today. Um, so these small exquisite objects, uh, we package inside of them diagnostics and therapeutics both to protect them from the body, but also to protect the body from them, and to control their function. So that on demand, on remote control, we can tell them either to um, begin their activity, their therapeutic act activity, or to tell us where there is a disease site. Uh, we're particularly interested in inflammation. So some of you may remember this cover of Time magazine in 2004. Inflammation is linked to the beginnings of diseases such as heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and a variety of other diseases. So what we do know about the biochemistry of inflammation is that um, in the beginning, there is a small imbalance in chemicals known as uh, reactive oxygen species. It's a really small imbalance, and so it's very difficult and challenging to see this. Okay. Um, so the story of imaging, so clinicians um, and pharmacists and such don't have imaging tools to see these very weak molecular signals. I want to tell you a little bit about the beginning of imaging. So imaging actually began uh, a little over 100 years ago when Wilhelm Röntgen, he's the first Nobel Prize laureate in physics, was just curious about this energy form and its interaction with matter. When he discovered x-rays, he didn't think that it would revolutionize medicine, as we now know. Um, and he, more profoundly, it completely changed the way we view ourselves and the world around us. So since then, there has been a succession of advances, and that what you see in front of you is the uh, energy that we get from the sun. It's called the electromagnetic spectrum. It's just different energy forms. And so since then, we've been using almost every wavelength on this spectrum, every energy form on this spectrum, to better understand the world around us and to also uh, understand disease. And it's after we understand disease, we can begin to treat disease. So what if I told you that there is um, a type of light form on this energy spectrum that is underutilized in medicine and has potential to really transform um, medicine? This energy actually lies between the visible light, that's what your eyes can see, and infrared light. That's the light that's used in your remote control to control your television. And it enjoys properties from both sides. It can travel through our bodies, so it gets inside our bodies. It's harmless, it doesn't change anything. But it also has properties of visible light. Visible light is responsible for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is how we get our food and our fuel. And so we dare to imagine, can we make this form of light 
um, useful in medicine, can we do chemistry inside living systems without having to open them up? Because this energy can travel through uh, living systems. So this, for example, laser is green light, and it doesn't travel through my thumb. If, when you go home, try a red laser and see how it'll travel through your thumb, and you'll see it. And that's the difference in, in, in these energy forms and their ability to travel inside. So what's holding us back is that this energy is um, very gentle. And there are only few chemistries that can do something with uh, molecules that can do something with this energy. And so that, that's what is a common thread between early detection of disease. We're trying to see very weak molecular signals and using this type of energy. So we took inspiration, actually, from the electronics industry. In the 1980s, IBM had developed this technique called chemically amplified photoresists. This is what allowed us, today, allowed us in the 80s to have our own computers and bring them into our house. It's really transformed our society that way. So this is how it works. So mankind, mankind has always been able to amplify weak signals, and this is how chemically amplified systems work, and this is our, our inspiration, our design. So we, we uh, strung together uh, molecules into a strand. It's called a polymer. It's like a spaghetti strand. And this polymer is designed to be unstable. The molecules in this polymer, there are millions of molecules strung together, and they're designed to be unstable. Now, we stabilize them with these groups, these chemistries that we know will come off when encountering this type of light and when encountering molecules, the beginnings of inflammation. Okay, then what happens when only one of those molecules that we have on there comes off, it triggers a cascade of reactions that reverberates through the strand and disassembles the entire strand into small, millions of small molecules, entirely dismantling the polymer that we built. We take this polymer and we build from it small, exquisite objects, like I said, to package diagnostics and therapeutics in there. And so when the polymer is completely dismantled, the entire object, the small, exquisite object, disassembles on command. So we were able to show that, that with this type of light, these objects are dismantled, and the therapeutic and the diagnostic is released, and we can control its function, and we can detect diseases. We've used it also for inflammation. We've received a lot of press. This, these are actual pictures of the particles that we build and how they are punctured with this type of light and with early, early signs of inflammation. So this is a short 30-second uh, video to show you how these systems can be used. Um, so the uh, we use MRI agents. We build MRI agents with these small exquisite objects. We inject them into uh, living systems. And they begin, they're smart enough, discerning enough, to recognize the biochemistry of disease inflammation at its earliest stages. Uh, here we have early signs of inflammation. And these light up and tell the physician that there's something wrong here. This biochemistry is off. OK, please check our website out. Uh, email us with questions, and thank you very much.